Since the beginning of time, stories have attempted to characterize the concept of death. Whether as a pale shadow, a cloaked figure, or something else altogether, death itself has appeared across countless mediums and for a multitude of reasons. From the past, to the present, and forevermore into the future, humans will grapple with the great unknown that is death. But in A Song of Ice and Fire, George R. R. Martin created a character who seemingly embodied the common traits of this universal fear and elevated them into a singular, chilling man. This man was Illin Payne. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Exploring Fiction. Fittingly serving as the royal headsman, Sir Illin Payne represented death to any and all who came across him in the narrative. He was a mute knight, a silent executioner with no misgivings for the deeds his occupation regularly entailed. Never was Illin thrust to the forefront in any particular conflict, but he was always there, waiting and watching to enact the king's justice and cut the head from any who crossed the crown. Often, Sir Illin Payne was the last a man saw of the living world, and that was hardly of any comfort. So, who exactly is Illin Payne, and why is he such an interesting character? Let's explore. Sir Illin Payne was born on an undisclosed year to undetermined parents. Similarly, little else was ever revealed of the man's childhood or even early adulthood, fitting for such an archetypal figure. Before the current events of the story, Illin served as captain of the guard for Lord Tywin Lannister, who himself was acting Hand of the King for Aerys Targaryen II. In the smoke and shadow of soldierly speak, Illin suggested Lord Tywin was the true ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, but the statement traveled far, even to the ears of the king himself. Aerys had Illin's tongue cut out for such blasphemy, partially creating the ghost of a man he later became. In the aftermath of Robert's rebellion and the Baratheon Lord's ascension to the throne, Robert named Illin the King's Justice. This served as recompense for the lost tongue, as well as a nod to Tywin for his assistance in winning the war. Sir Illin took to his duties with stone-cold vigor, only heightening his ruthless reputation. Illin Payne was a tall man, thin and beardless, with a rugged face and pale eyes. His cheeks were hollow, and what little hair he did have was stringy and oily, falling from the sides of his head. As a result of his missing tongue, he stood ever silent and watchful, letting his various swords speak in his stead. Illin bore or wore no garments reflecting the arms of his house, and was instead seen in his dull gray armor, worn over boiled leather and chainmail. He carried his two-handed greatsword in a scabbard across his back, and the weapon was so large that the hilt was left protruding over his shoulder. In time, he came to replace this weapon with the stark ceremonial sword Ice, and though the Northmen viewed this as sacrilege, Illin took great care of his weapons. He was nearly perfect as an executioner, felling almost all victims with a single stroke of his blade, and though he was haunting and unsettling in equal amounts. He was valuable to the king, who bade him journey north as the events of the narrative begin to unfold. Along with the rest of Robert's retinue, Illin Payne first appears in A Game of Thrones. He meets with King Robert as the man returns from the north, terrifying the newcomers from Winterfell with his mere presence. Yet when one of these northerners, the stoic Lord Eddard Stark, sits his hand to the king on the throne while Robert is away, he passes over Sir Illin for the task of hunting down Sir Gregor Clegane in the Riverlands. Though he is clearly one of the most well-suited men for the job, Illin can only watch as a task whose end is justice is passed to someone who is not the king's justice. But it is Sir Illin who towers above Lord Eddard in the end, as the latter man is arrested and charged with treason after Robert's death. Illin takes the stark greatsword Ice as his own, and upon the steps of the Great Sept of Baelor, cleaves Eddard's head from his shoulders 
with the very same sword. By order of the new King Joffrey is the execution carried out, as most expected Lord Eddard to be granted the courtesy of joining the Night's Watch. But Illyn is the King's Justice, and Joffrey is the King, and so he obeys without question and without regret. With this action, he makes an enemy for life of young Arya Stark, and becomes evil incarnate to her older sister Sansa. Throughout A Clash of Kings, Sir Illyn Payne continues to carry out the will of King Joffrey, though even the boy's mother Cersei disagrees with many of the king's decrees. But during the tumultuous Battle of the Blackwater, Illyn is gifted by Cersei with a different task. Instead of joining the fray, he remains in Maegar's holdfast with Cersei, Sansa, and the rest of the highborn women. In the shadows of the ballroom he lurks, even executing a trio of servants who attempt to flee. But while Sansa initially believes him a last line of defense, Cersei explains that Illyn's presence is not a hindrance to their enemies, but a contingency for themselves. For if Stannis is victorious, he and his men will certainly sack the city, placing all the women in danger. Illyn stands as a way out, tasked by Cersei to kill her and Sansa if the Lannister Baratheon forces fall to the Lord of Dragonstone. However, a combined army of Lannisters and Tyrells, led by Lord Tywin Lannister himself, march from the west and prevent the need for Illyn's grisly task. In the aftermath of the Blackwater, Illyn punishes those unwilling to bend the knee to the victorious King Joffrey. In A Storm of Swords, Illyn remains in King's Landing with the forces of the crown, ever haunting in the background of the royal court. He surrenders ice to Lord Tywin, so the legendary blade can be melted and reforged into two new weapons for the Lannisters, but the lions compensate him for his troubles. Tywin gifts him a new blade, a six foot long silver greatsword, etched with runes and holding a pommel of dragonglass carved as a grinning skull with glowing ruby eyes. For most of the volume, Sir Illyn keeps to the periphery. He is present at the wedding of Joffrey and Marjorie, standing in silent contemplation as yet another king meets his demise. He also watches from the rear of the royal court as the saga of Tyrion's trial unfolds, and when Sir Gregor is mortally wounded but not killed in the trial by combat against Prince Oberyn Martell, Tywin even tasks Illyn with finishing off the mountain to appease the Dornishmen for a sin committed long ago. However, before the decree is put into practice, Lord Tywin is felled by his own son, and the stability of the realm is once again thrown heavily into question. Sir Illyn Payne serves under a new monarch in A Feast for Crows. Following the death of her father, Cersei Lannister claims the official title of Queen Regent, and in her disgruntled state regarding the behavior of her escaped brother Tyrion, blames Illyn for his disappearance. Although a minor duty, the dungeons of the Red Keep are under the domain of the King's Justice. But now, after so much time spent in the shadows, Sir Illyn's name is finally called for an active campaign. Along with Sir Adam Marbrand, Sir Jamie Lannister named Sir Illyn to ride forth with him to settle the Riverlands and conclude the Siege of Riverrun. Jamie decides if Lord Beric Dondarrion now the obvious leader of the Brotherhood Without Banners, is captured. Sir Illyn is to perform a public execution in the capital. However, the Brotherhood remains generally elusive, and so the pair of Illyn and Jaime take to sparring upon the latter's request. For Jaime sees in Illyn the perfect sparring partner, silent yet skilled. The King's Justice bests the Kingslayer on multiple occasions, but Jaime is not so easily dissuaded, and the pair practice nightly. During one of these sessions, Jaime admits to Illyn the truth of his relationship with Cersei, and though it is an abomination to speak aloud, he does not fear Illyn, for the man is both mute and illiterate. Though unsettling to most, he proves the perfect confidant for the confused and conflicted Jaime. Outside the walls of Riverrun, the Freys manage the siege poorly, 
and Jamie, with Illyn by his side, take swift command of the operations. The Kingslayer wields the King's justice as a threat toward the sniveling phrase, and they obey at the sight and thought of the skeletal man. Edmure Tully, captive of the Men of the Crossing, is handed over to Jamie, and he surrenders Riverrun to Lord Emmon Frey, though his uncle the Blackfish eludes the Lannister forces. The Freys depart with captives in tow, but Jaime and Illyn remain in the Riverlands to resolve the remaining conflicts. By night they spar, and as he grows more and more accustomed to Illyn's presence, Jaime begins to share even more wretched details of his relationship with Cersei. And in A Dance with Dragons, when Jaime is called away from his duty by Brienne of Tarth, Sir Illyn is not mentioned, though he undoubtedly remains amidst the Lannister camp. Few characters survive the entirety of the chaos that unfolds within the pages of A Song of Ice and Fire. Whether major participants in the struggle for the Iron Throne, or merely passers-by on the winding roads of Westeros, few individuals escape unscathed. Sir Illyn Payne, however, defies this statement. Like a very avatar of death, he lingers in the shadows wherever he may be. Due to his unjust injury, he embraces silence, and he equally envelops himself in the role of King's Justice. Where many come to love or hate Eddard or Joffrey or Cersei or Rob, Illyn just is. Of course, he is a frightening figure, but he is not the foremost subject of ire or praise for many. Instead, he appears as the immovable, unchangeable embodiment of death in the narrative. With his silence, his dark garb, and his apathetic attitude toward his grisly work, Sir Illyn represents more than just a man. He is the grim reaper of the world of ice and fire. Yet, he carries another, more sympathetic aspect. Illyn's relationship with Sir Jaime Lannister displays the depths of his loyalty. While he cannot speak and cannot write, making him an easy confidant to trust, Illyn still listens as Jaime reveals the darkest truths of his life. The King's justice does not judge the man, nor rush to bring to light his twisted secrets, but instead accepts them and comes to know the Kingslayer as a more complete man. While it is impossible to tell the loyalties of Sir Illyn Payne through anything but his actions, he stands as a frightening, yet empathetic, personification of death. Where most took advantage of their silver tongues to seduce and bargain their way to power, Illyn Payne had no method of speech. But with the sword, the King's justice was an equal amongst legends. He was an imposing figure seemingly born for the occupation of royal executioner. Through his silence, skill, and nonchalant demeanor with which he carried out his tasks, Sir Illyn proved a more real version of death than any of the many religions in Westeros or Essos could ever illustrate. Though he is just a man, Sir Illyn Payne appears as a grim specter. So, that's all for this video. Leave a comment with your thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new here, I'd love to have you. Visit my website russellawellsauthor.com for exclusive reviews, fiction, and more. And sign up for my mailing list for free exclusive content. The links for both are in the description below. And, like always, I will see you next time.